if you do not understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time, all of the time. Good morning and welcome to the June the 28th. 2022 edition of the CRCS, also called the Counter Racist Code Show, with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co host, Mr. Bobby, and we start off by saying thank you for tuning in to today's edition of our program. Thank you. Contact numbers for those of you who are new to the program simply dial 516. 516- Four five three nine nine two one. And if you have a comment or a question for Mr. Fuller, you can dial that number and make sure that you press the number one button and you will get in line. And when you do that, please be sure to give your name to the call screener so that I can give you an introduction. For those of you who are first-time caller and first-time callers only, uh, please um, uh, give your name to the uh, call screen and let them know that you are a first-time caller, and we have something set up special for you so that you can be heard. But that's for first callers only. Make sure you do that. You can also uh, contact the show by my uh, Gmail address. That is the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby B O B B Y at Gmail dot com. And that procedure, when you do that, you will get in line and they will be read accordingly, particularly when we have space and time, they will be read. And I will let you know the date and time it will be read. And I also will let you know that when I receive your Gmail that I will say, got it. And that make that lets you know that uh, I have received it, so don't worry about that. You can also uh, join the chat room, and all you have to do to that is go to blogtalkradio.com. And once you get there, then there's a place that you see on the top of the line here that says Programs. And you want to hit that and go to the Produce, Produce Justice Show. Then when you do that, then a little bar will come up. And you can enter into the chat room, and you can go in there and um, get into some wonderful chats, wonderful chats. And occasionally I will read uh, some of the chats or give you what's going on in there. But if you have a question, do not use the chat room for me to ask your questions. You call that number, the opening number, for that. Okay, and whatever you do, that's for everybody (laughs) listening and everybody in the chat room, and I will be mentioning this throughout the program. Make sure that you stay on code. Even when the show is over, still stay on code. Be codified. All righty. With that being said, let's see. I think that is all I have to do right now. Okay, Mr. Fuller will be um, mentioning from time to time about his uh, books, and you can get the book or books by going to ProduceJustice.com. That is ProduceJustice.com. In addition to that, there is some information about other uh, products that may be on there, and if Mr. Fuller has an upcoming appearance on other uh, shows, particularly the Carl Nelson show. Uh, We have set up a a situation where you can uh, access that show by going to producejustice.com. But um, he will let, or they will let me know, and then I will let you know when Mr. Fuller will be on the show, and then you can catch that. Okay, I I think that's it, yeah, for right now. 
Okay, so let me proceed with this. We've introduced a, a, a topic for Mr. Fuller called the thoughts and expressions on the mind of Neely Fuller, Jr., and that's how we start the program out. And, Mr. Fuller, let's say to you this morning, good morning, and how are you? Good morning. I'm still learning. You are still learning. Good. Mr. Fuller, what are your thoughts and expressions of this morning um, that you would like to, for us to consider? Well, several things, but the principal thing i uh, like to talk about first uh, the recent decisions by the Supreme Court and the one dealing with abortion. I think a lot of ladies would like to know what the codified uh, response to that would be. So I haven't thought about that enough to come to a conclusion other than what the code says, and that is basically in the best of worlds, which we don't have, nowhere near it, that you would have a child born because once they start on this way, that should be completed. That's the basic code position for a universal female. But then, because we're in a prison camp, in a system of white supremacy, which is a prison camp for all of the non-white people of planet Earth, it's extremely difficult for a black female to raise a child or to deliver a child under prison camp conditions. So, therefore, in the compensatory ways, under the United Independent banner, uh, my response would have to be that that's a decision for black females to make in the prison camp called the system of white supremacy. They make, I would have to say that as a black male, I'm not able to take care, uh, provide for a black female other than what the white supremacists allow me to do, which is just about zero. They don't even intend for me to be of any assistance to her at all. Uh, a black male is not supposed to be a father in the system of white supremacy because he himself, is a child, according to the white supremacists. He's never supposed to be a man. And so it's kind of difficult for a child to raise a child, particularly when everything is geared toward a non-white person in the system of white supremacy functioning as a child. So you have a black child, regardless of what his age is, and you have a black child regardless of what her age is or what her financial condition is or any other condition in any of the nine areas of activity. Because we're born as children, and the white supremacists demand, demand, absolutely demand, that if you have color in your skin, you are supposed to remain a child. You never become a grown person. But then they will say that you have the quote unquote responsibilities of a child. So what does the code say in the mix of all of this? The counter racist code. It says that each individual has to decide for themselves what course they want to take and then take it. Because under BGQ anyway, neither fuller, I'm not, I don't have the qualifications for determine, determining what another non-white person does 
or says about race, racism, and our counter-racism, and our reactions to race and our racism. Because that's the prison system that we're in. The system of white supremacy is a prison system for people of color. And so anybody who is, has even a peripheral knowledge of prison conditions, prisoners of war, do not have any say-so about anything. So the rulers, the prison masters, say whether you can copulate or not, and whether or not you will produce a child in prison, and what will happen to that child, they determine all of that. They, meaning racist man and racist woman, the prison masters. So you just do the best you can for your individual condition. Everybody knows their own individual condition. And so other fellow prisoners are not supposed to pass judgment on that at all. They just say, well, (laughs) I'm not you. And uh, I'm not the one who's pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant. So uh, trying to keep from getting pregnant. So therefore, this is all between you and the prison masters. Uh, it's, It's nothing that I have to say about it. I can't criticize it. Whatever moves you make, if you decide that you want to abort, I can't. I'm really not in position as a fellow prisoner to pass judgment on you in your condition because I'm not the one who is expecting a child on the way. And that's particularly where the black male is concerned. Even though he helped to get the child, presumably, and uh, so it's for the black female. She's correct when she says, "It's my body. Nobody's carrying this child but me." So therefore, who is going to help me? Because knowing how the world is run under the system of white supremacy. That's what every black female who is going to have a child or four children or or ten or whatever worldwide. I'm a prisoner. That's the first thing she should realize. So as a prisoner, I don't own anything. I don't have anything. I have no way of getting anything except from the white supremacists who would just have some type of mercy on me as a prisoner of war. So nothing is promised to me. So who's going to take care of me and my child? Because this black male can't take care of himself. He can't guarantee nobody nothing. So there it is. I just want to throw that out there. Yes, sir. Because that's a codified position. That's the codified position. As a black male, I have mm-hmm. to take that position. Yes, sir. Okay. Stay on code. Be codified. As a matter of fact, to for our, particularly our new listeners, um, particularly in the chat room, brightness is in there, and and text green triple seven is in there. Um. Stay on code. That's for all of us, but stay on code. And what what can help you is what is in Mr. Fuller's book. Um, it's called the um, Ten Basic Stops. And what they do is, or what they help you to do, is to minimize conflict. Stop. Stop snitching. Stop name calling. Stop cursing. Stop gossiping. Stop being discourteous. Stop stealing. Stop robbing, stop fighting, stop killing, and stop squabbling among yourselves and asking racist 
that is white supremacy, to settle it, a must for any and everyone who wishes to replace racism with justice. I use compensatory justice, and the made-up term for that compensatory is, is, is made up, rather, made up for what has been lost or taken from us. Stay on code. Thank you, constructive action items in the chat. Has them all right there, the 10 stops. Okay, let's go right to the phone lines, and we're going to head up to Milwaukee, and that's going to be you, Corey. Get ready. Okay, Corey, you are in the house. Good morning, and what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Greetings, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Um, Mr. Fuller, I had a question. Um, Lately, I've been having interactions with white people, and in the conversation, the conversation is naturally leading to produce justice or counter-racism, I get the reaction from some white people, oh, you know everything, huh, and sarcasm such as this. What is a compensatory way to get directly to the point when a white person asks me what they should do concerning them having a quality relationship? What's a simplified, direct way to quickly explain that to a white person? Well, every white person on the planet, according to the code, is supposed to be trying to be what every black person is supposed to be trying to be. And that is universal man and universal woman. Now, what does this mean? People who, everything that they do has a constructive result. Everything that you do and say, that should be the ultimate goal of every person Every person, every every creature in the form of what they call a being, human being, or a creature that's aspiring to be a human being. We don't have human beings on the planet now, according to the code, because we're not humane. That's something we're supposed to be, supposed to be, logically speaking, trying to achieve. So it's called universal man and universal woman. And this applies, according to the code, to white people, non-white people, all creatures in the form of what we call people, universal man, universal woman. And some of the characteristics of that universal man and universal woman, which is what we're all supposed to be trying to be every day, is, uh, first of all, you do not knowingly say anything that is not true. you got to have the truth. The system of white supremacy is not about using the truth to produce anything except support the system of white supremacy. You only use the truth for that position. And they will tell any kind of lie any time of day or night that will keep the system of white supremacy going. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want is to reveal the truth. Well, what truth? The truth about everything. Whatever it is, it is. Tell it like it is, as we say, in a slang expression. And we've got to have that. So a universal man and a universal woman or someone who's aspiring to be that, and everybody should be, white and non-white, You do not knowingly, at any time, say anything that is not true. And you try to find the truth all the time, so you'll know what it is. Mm -hmm. And when you tell it, you'll be telling it like it is. And other characteristics, which are in the textbook for victims of white supremacy, by the way, under universal man and universal woman, that you can get by going to producejustice.com. But another characteristic, speaks and acts as if sexual intercourse and sexual play between people is always between a male person and a female person, exclusively. 
Now, it's going to be a lot of controversy about that, and it already is, and it is even when I say it. But I'm saying, ultimately, I'm not passing judgment on the people who say that they're transsexual or gay. Or, uh, the code doesn't allow me to do that. But it does say you have males and you have females on this planet, and they're different. And so if you're going to have universal man and universal woman, you don't cancel that. You, it's not logical. Uh, you have a male and you have a female. They're not scraps. They're not left over from some other type of sexuality. They are fundamental. It's sometimes called straight. And it's not even listed now as, you know, as, I mean, among the, what you call the, the pride movement, and I don't know how that got into it at all. You know, <laughs> you're not proud to be male and female, or, or proud to be uh, where it comes to non-white people. shouldn't be proud to be anything. Why? Because we're prisoners of war. There's no pride in that at all. Shouldn't strut around at no circumstance saying it's time to celebrate in our pride in being what we are. What we are are prisoners of the system of white supremacy. And that's the main thing that we are. Mm -hmm. We're not human beings. Human beings are humane. Human beings do not kill each other. They do not do unjust harm to each other under any circumstance. And black people nor white people qualify for the title of human being in a system of white supremacy. It's totally absurd. So in a capsule, in answer to the question, uh, there's a whole list of things, some suggestions that would Yes. The characteristics of universal man and universal woman. Just, just as a start. It's not yes, a complete sir. list because we've never had that. We've never had mm -hmm. a universal man and mm -hmm. universal woman in recorded history. We've never had people on this planet who are the quality of people that people ought to be. There's nothing in recorded history that has that. Just yes, on one thing alone, we have a thing called war. And people who slaughter each other are not qualified to be universal man and universal woman under any circumstance. But under the system of white supremacy, we glorify war. And we get medals for killing people. All kind of awards, all kind of of strutting down the middle of the street with pride. We've got something coming up in a few days in the northwestern hemisphere called the 4th of July, where they're going to be setting off what? Fireworks. Imitating what? The sound of gunfire. Who needs that? Hmm. Logically speaking. We don't yes, need any sound of gunfire anywhere on the planet. We had been there, done that, and still doing it, and trying to do tons more of it. Can't breathe without it. Ceasing people's breaths. I can't breathe. George Floyd. Well, what is gunfire about? Taking away the ability to breathe. That's when it comes to people killing people. Mm -hmm. Bang, right. bang, bang, fall down, you're dead. And we teach young people that at an early age in all of our spectacular blockbuster movies. I'm still talking about universal man, universal woman. None of that. Nothing that is non-constructive is a characteristic of universal man and universal woman, regardless of 
how many people are doing what now, because we are nowhere near the quality of creatures that should populate this planet. That includes all of the white people, every last one of them, and all of the non-white people, every last one of us. Nowhere near, completely disqualified from celebrating anything, according to what? Neely Fuller? No, according to logic. According to logic. Okay. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we thank you for listening to the show. For those that are new, to get in contact with the show, 516-453-9921 is the number that you would call. And if you have a question or comment, just press the number one button so that you can get in line. And make sure that you give your name to the call screener so that I can give you a proper uh, introduction. Could you do that? You can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And uh, when I receive it, I will put got it on there. And it will be read at a time when it is a little slow or the lines are not as busy. Gmails will be read as I'm getting ready to do in a few moments. And you can also join the chat room. All you have to do is go to blogtalkradio.com. If you want to enter in the place that says programs, push, uh, select that button, and then the chat will come up, and then you select that, and you are in the chat. And they are pretty good in there. Text Green 777, thank you. Although you say you've been here before, okay, good. Brightness is in there. These are new. And Tez knows. Thank you. Thank you. B Sam 721, get ready. All righty. Anyway, that's the uh, lineup today. In a few moments here, Mr. Fuller will speak about his book that we can um, get all the latest information uh, from that. We're talking about being, make sure that you uh, are codified. And how about this? Don't just talk about it. Let's live codified every single day. Codified. Stay on code. From the chat room, Mr. Fuller, this is um, B, uh, Brian B1322 says this. Mr. Fuller, I'm wondering those school shootings, I wonder if they use some sort of brain control to let them do it the MK Ultra and the LSD mind control. Your thoughts, Mr. Fuller. Thank you. Well, to the extent, I'll say what the code says, to the extent that a racist has anything to do with anything, it is either directly or indirectly designed to do harm to people of color. Anything that they come up with, anything that you see the white supremacists come up with, no matter how it looks on the surface, it may look like it has no connection to uh, anything that's going on right there at all. They they are like, like magicians, but it's not magic, it's science. They They know how to control how people think. And they know how to make chemicals that will help do that. And they can guide people to do anything. They are masters. They are the brainiest people on the planet. But the things that they do, the things that they have chosen to do, and that is dominate and mistreat people on the basis of color, is pure evil. Mm -hmm. But they spend full time coming up with newer ways to entertain themselves, tearing on that evil into infinity. They burn midnight oil saying, what can we come up now with now? We've done just about everything we can do to these ragged people. But what can we come up with new? Is there anything new we can come up with, I mean, where we can just dominate and mistreat these people of color 
into infinity. I mean, you know, a lot of the things we are doing now, we've been doing it for so long, it's getting boring. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that we can think of? Is there anything you can think of? Hey, Mac. You know, hey, Jill. Hey, Geraldine. Hmm. Think of something that we can do that can be entertaining and dominating and mistreating all of these people of color that we have at our disposal. I'm getting tired of some of the things that we're doing. I mean, you know, I'm bored. Can we think of something new? And so they get busy trying to think of something new, and they usually come up with something. Mm-hmm. And okay. Then, you know, and then take a look at it and say, this is one of our products. You know, with something new that we are doing with these Negroes, <laughs> this raw material. Mm-hmm. These nobodies that are here for our entertainment as we mistreat them, which is our principal entertainment. We have no entertainment other than that. And we don't like being bored. Okay. All righty. Thank you, B. Sams. Let's see here. Whoops. Okay. This is This one is from Aaron, Mr. Fuller. He says this, Mr. Fuller, in the human activity of religion, how have the white how have the white supremacy powers been so effective in submerging black people into settling for freedom, justice, and equality in a afterlife or another life existence? Why has this strategy been so dominant and effective? Please expound as much as you can, Mr. Fuller. Because it has to do with the future. You know, we come into the world looking forward to something. So the white supremacists are the master psychologists of the planet in recorded history. All right. So they know how people think. People look forward to things. You own the job and you say, well, you know, as soon as I get off this job, I'm... I'm, I'm, you know, my, I'm, I'm going home and and you know, go to my place of residence, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Uh, or as soon as I get a little time off, I think that I'm going sailing. People like to have something. People say that all the time. We say that. We say that every day. Something to look forward to. So the white supremacists say, oh. So I'll tell you something that all you people can look forward to. You can look forward to dying, all right, because we're all going to look forward to that. We should be looking forward to it. But when you dark-skinned people die, that's when you'll have all the goodies that you ever thought you wanted. I mean, it's going to come your way by the ton. You're just going to be so giddy. All the time, nonstop, night and day, walking around singing songs and doing all the wonderful things that you have ever thought about doing, you'll get it. But you got to die first, mm-hmm. and I'll help you in that department big time. So, since black people depended on white people since the beginning of the system of white supremacy, for everything, including our quote unquote education, part of our education is how to practice religion. And a big part of some religions that they practice has to do with what they call the hereafter. Mm-hmm. So it's a good way to keep black people looking forward. To, well, when when do I get paid? When when I if I do nice things and all like that, do I get anything now? Nope, <laughs> you can't get it now. I mean, that's not the deal. You do all these wonderful things that I tell you to do. All right. Well, it's all they are always the white supremacist, racist man and racist woman 
are always the qualifier now. They're going to tell you how to spend your time while you're on earth. Now, if you work hard every day for me and do what I tell you to do in all nine areas of activity, economics, you know, depend on me for that, education, depend on me for that, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion. If you want to know about religion, I know more about religion than you'll ever know, so you black people gather around me, and I'll give you the format to use for whatever your religion is, all the can-dos and what you can't do and what you have freedom to do and all like that. And sex. We'll tell you what to do when it comes to sex, how to use your bodies, and, and what's popular and what to take pride in, all right? And uh, we'll change that every now and then. I mean, you know, just because we, we get bored of looking at you doing whatever we tell you to do. Uh, usually a bunch of nonsense, something mm-hmm. that makes no sense at all, okay? And something not logical, something that the creator of the universe looks at, and if the creator has a head, he shakes it all the time, looking at what we got you black people doing, okay? And we think that we're on the correct course. And hmm. war, of course, which is our whole thing. We love war. And we have you all engaged in that and within a religious framework. You can call yourself a Christian soldier, you know, after we tell you to do it. Mm-hmm. And tell you, you know, you're fighting. You have to kill somebody, maybe. But it'll all be in the name of religion if I tell you so. Mm-hmm. And you can have sex with a dog if I tell you so. And take pride in it. Don't forget that pride. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to have you doing all kinds of things that you can take pride in. You've been doing them all along, wouldn't I? But I'm going to puff it up so that you'll not only be doing it, but you'll be having all kinds of pride and taking up a whole lot of time. You should be becoming universal man and universal woman. You'll be having pride in doing everything that you can possibly do to do what? Entertain me. And this is what you'll be looking forward to. So in answer to the question, oh, what is religion? See, first of all, what is religion? Religion is a strong belief backed up by action. So black people get our strong beliefs from the white supremacists. We can't name one. In this day and time, Mm -hmm. maybe in ancient times, wasn't true. But in modern times, everybody on this planet now has color in their skin, taking their signals from the white supremacists about what's valuable, what's not valuable, what's bad, what's good, what to pride in, what to not take pride in, who to kill, who not to kill, and when and where. And everything, in all nine areas of activity, we can't name anything that's not controlled by the white supremacists. Not one thing. When I say we, I mean the prisoners of war called black people. Because that's Mm. all that we are, prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. All righty. All righty. Okay, new caller alert. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. New caller alert. Uh, this is, um, we're going to go way up to, huh, speaking about the Northwest, get ready, Richard, in Olympia, Washington. You are on with Mr. Fuller. Don't be scared. What is your question? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Um, <clears throat> I just randomly called this number because I've heard this conversation on YouTube and whatnot. But um, what I wanted to say was, I don't know what you think of this question, but but my job, what I do for a living, for work, what I tell everybody in the world,
things on earth, on the planet, in the universe is that I am the type of person who is against the system of racism and white supremacy because rap, rhythm, and poetry, hip-hop, knowledge, movement, R&B, rhythm, and blues means that it's black, it's African-American. And then the word Nazi, National Socialist German Workers' Party, means that it's white, it's German. And Adolf Hitler and the Nazi white German type of people didn't like rap, hip-hop, R&B, black, African-American type of people, point blank, period. And the Nazis, they say the N-word with the E-R in it instead of the N-word with the A in it, like rap, hip-hop, R&B, black, African-American type of people do or say. And my gamer tag on Xbox Live is Project Rap. Excuse me, Richard, for interrupting, but is, is there a question there? Called 57 Bulletproof, and there was this one mission called Projects. And that is my job. That's what I do for a living, for work. Mm-hmm. That's what I tell everybody in the world, on Earth, on the planet, in the universe. So I just wanted to say that because I've always heard the show and I wanted to see what you think of that. All right. Yeah, well, your question is what now? What is your actual question? That I'm the type of person who is against racism and white supremacy. And what I was well, wait a minute. Uh, you're, you're coming. You're, for one thing, it's kind of difficult hearing you. Uh, like, it's, are you talking into a speakerphone or what? Or something. I'm getting. A, okay. I'm getting. I'm not getting clarity. Can you hear uh, me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. What is your question quickly, please, sir? Well, my question was, I was saying my job, what I do for a living for work is, I'm the type of person who is against racism, white supremacy. And I was yeah. saying, what does rap, hip-hop, R&B, and the word Nazi means? And that how Adolf Hitler and the Nazi white German type of people didn't like rap, hip-hop, R&B, black, African-American type of people, point blank, period. And how okay. the Nazi well, what was the N word with the E. Yeah, yeah. Well, what is your, um, how do you deal with that anyway? I mean, okay. How do you deal with that, Mr. Fuller? How do I deal with what the, uh, the, the what the Nazis uh, yeah, the think about hip hop? Yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah, since that's his job, how do you deal with that? Oh, the white supremacists uh, don't approve of anything that a black person does that might lead to. Constructive results. Remember those two words. So they'll look at anything that black people are doing. And they'll say, did I tell you to do that? Did I tell you to sing that song and whatnot? But they'll look at it. Now, if what black people are doing, whether they're singing a a blues song and all like that, does that help a black person do anything constructive? That's the only thing the white supremacists are interested in. Because anything that a black person does that has a constructive result, that constructive result is supposed to be benefit for a white person. Anything that a black person, if a black person comes up with a new song or an invention or anything, it's supposed to, first of all, be of great help to a white person constructive help. Now, if a black person comes up with something that is silly and stupid, whether it's a song, regardless of what you call it, but it's going to cause black people to do do things that are silly and stupid rather than something of constructive value, then the white supremacists will approve of that. Mm. But the criteria okay. is always mm. No black person is ever supposed to do anything that makes sense hmm. unless it benefits the system of white supremacy. Yes, sir. All right. Richard, thank you for your call. As I gotta be I gotta be consistent, uh, since you're a new caller, um don't be a stranger. All right. Um hey everybody, don't forget. You gotta practice staying on code or staying or being codified, that means living it. 
We got to live this thing for real, for real, for real. Darnell, New York, glad you are back. You are next. Hold on, Anthony, and hold on, Ray. Uh, let's see here. Darnell, man, welcome back. Go ahead, bro. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. My question for you today is, why is it so important to to stay on a constructive code in all the nine areas of activity and, and not just have it in one area? Because the system of white supremacy covers all areas of activity. There's nothing that a non-white person does that the white supremacists are not supposed to approve of or disapprove of. Like in any prison, you have prison rules. That's all. And the white supremacists set all the rules for the non-white people of this planet 24 hours a day. What you can do, what you can't do, what you better not think about doing, and what they want you to always think about doing, and that is do something that's a service to us and do nothing that is a constructive service to people that look like yourself as a black person. Never do anything unless we allow you. You get our permission to do anything constructive, anything that's going to produce a constructive result for a black person has to be approved of by the white supremacists, racist man and racist woman. Yeah. In fact, any move that you make has to have their approval. Mm-hmm. If they put their, their stamp of disapproval on it, I mean, it, it means you're going to be hurting if you do it. They'll let you know that in no uncertain terms, and they got the muscle to do it. And it's nobody to come to your rescue except yourself. That's what All white right. supremacy means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All righty. Thank you, Darnell. You know what's happening. Okay, going up to Buffalo. Anthony, Buffalo, you're in the house. Good morning, and welcome to the program. What's your question for Mr. Fuller? Yes, uh, I wanted to ask Mr. Fuller about this uh, pro-life versus pro-choice thing. So pro-life is uh, against abortion, pro-choice is for abortion. So some good things that the pro-life, the the quote-unquote pro-life, pro-lifers say about abortion is a life is being killed. So I can understand that. You don't know who that person could have been. So uh, I heard uh, somebody like uh, Farrakhan say, say that his mom actually tried to abort him. So you never know who uh, that person aborted could have been. Uh, This is something here that I made up. You yourself could have been aborted. And some things that the pro-choice or people for abortion say are the baby is being born into a horrible situation born into a horrible world with little to no help women could have, the woman could have been raped and it's too much to handle and the 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 uh, classic one it's her body and it's her choice and it's her decision and just real quick so what i concluded is the best way to solve this issue is to establish a system of justice like you teach mr neely fuller so babies can be born into a safe, better world and the practice of sex or or, or I'm sorry, and this and the practice of sex isn't vulgarly commercialized by, by the white supremacists and we don't have to worry so much about abortion. So I guess my question is is if we create a system of of, of justice, then wouldn't that in itself fix this abortion issue? 
That's the only thing that will fix anything. You've got to get rid of the entire system of white supremacy. And the book says that. I've said it. Logic says it, because the book is based on logic. You can't have a system of white supremacy and have anything that works the way it ought to among people. It's just not going to happen. I mean, there's no way to, to, to twist it and turn it and try to tweak it and all this other stuff that everybody is doing. Everybody's engaged in it. Everybody's engaged in behavior that shouldn't even exist in the system of white supremacy because the system of white supremacy shouldn't exist. So in order to correct this mess, all of it, the world is messed up. I mean, this picking around the edges like we've been doing like forever is not going to cut it. You have to get rid of the entire system of white supremacy in all nine areas of activity. You can't leave anything hanging. Because whatever part of it you leave, it's going to poison, it's poisonous, and it's going to spread right back to what it was. Okay. And that's in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. The religious thing, all of it, is all messed up. I mean, there's no way to patch it up and whatnot in the system of white supremacy. No way to fake it or say that you can make it the way that the creator wants it to be. All of the religions have been right. dominated by the religion mm-hmm. of white supremacy. That is the dominant religion on the planet. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me say thank you, um, Anthony. Let me say this for those of you who are going to call in. Uh, when um, you're asked to ask a question, um, you don't really have to give a, solilo- a soliloquy or uh, unless you state that this is a VGQ. Just ask your question, please, so that Mr. Fuller can understand it and we can get to the bottom of your question. Okay, can, can you do that? Just be brief. Please, when asking your question. Okay, now this is what we're going to do here. We're going to have Mr. Fuller for the next few moments talk about his book that you can get from going uh, get by going to producejustice.com, and then we have four callers at least on my screen. One new Rachel will get to that too. But Mr. Fuller, we need to speak about your book for a couple of moments here. Go ahead, please. Well, the book is designed to help the individual person get through each and every day as best he or she can in the system of white supremacy. That's for victims of white supremacy. If you don't consider yourself a victim of white supremacy, then nothing in the volume applies to you. It's supposed to be helpful for the individual victim when nobody else will give you any help and whatnot. It's it's designed for you alone, whether you're on on a job that you're given to do, uh, whether it's something in the field of education. uh, What do you do? What do you... Everything is about doing and not doing. Every, Every creature on the planet is either doing something or not doing something, or simultaneously not doing something and doing something. So what does a victim of white supremacy do as an individual without having to run and check with somebody else every five minutes about what's the best way to go about doing this, what's the best way to go about doing that? So that's what the book is supposed to be designed to do that you already have answers to these questions. You don't have to run and get an answer at the last minute every time something comes up, and something is always coming up in the prison system called the system of white supremacy. And it's a difficulty of some type that the victim of white supremacy is trying to overcome. Now, I'm not saying that the book guarantees that... (laughs) that it will work, but it says that if you try it, it's most likely to work, 
because some tests have been run on them. All right? So if you're going to a meeting and all like that, you shouldn't have to fish around and be nervous about what you're going to say at the meeting. You already know because that's what we call in uh, compensatory language codification. You have a code. You say, well, are, are you going to take uh, Miss So-and-so? Are you going to take Mr. So-and-so? Are you going to be able to contact so-and-so and have them come with you so that they can help you because it's going to be real tense in there and all like that? What the code book is designed to do, say, no, <laughs> I'm just going to take me and the code book to whatever the situation is, and I'm going to find something in this book that's going to take care of it. That's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm not saying that the book that Neely Fuller has produced will do that, but it's on the road to heaven because someone asked me some years ago, Fuller, where's the whole code? I need the whole code, not just, you know, pieces of it like you, you know, you got a word guide and whatnot. And even before I had a word guide, people said, where's the whole code? And my response was correct. There's no such thing as a whole code until all problems are solved. The world is full of problems, but every problem there is a solution. So the code book that you can get by going to ProduceJustice.com, the counter-racist code, is supposed to help the individual solve whatever problem you are facing on that particular day. And it's supposed to be the, the, the best solution you can come up with at this time. There might be better solutions, and we should all be working on that. But it gives you something to start with. That's why I call it basically guides, textbook, workbook. You're working yourself through it. Nobody mm-hmm. has solved the race problem, but you can get it by going to producejustice.com. What should come up on the screen is the method for ordering whatever is available right now. Right now, I think it might be some problems in getting individual copies, but that's you just keep going to that website, producejustice.com, and the problem should be solved in getting the volumes, uh, mm-hmm. the basic volume or the original and the word guide, uh, if not now, within the next week anyway. So I've, so I've been told. Okay. All righty. Well, we are just about ready to come to the conclusion of the first hour of the uh, Counter-Racist Code show. Listen, some people are having problems on getting on Blog Talk. Well, if you can't, just go to ProduceJustice.com, Brian, in particular, and you can get on the show. For those of you who will have to uh, leave in this first hour, okay, we'll let you go this time. But hopefully we can uh, be in contact next, uh, contact, contact next week. Hope you enjoy the hour. Don't forget to be codified. For those of you that are going to stay on, hang on, because we have another full hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Neely Fuller, Jr. Make sure you have all your questions and whatever have you, and don't forget to live on code. We are going to take about a 10-second break, and then we are going to start the second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller. Thanks for listening. Let's let's do the 10 right now. All righty. Welcome back to the second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I'd like to thank my, my people who set this clock up for me here. Uh, uh, the host, yeah, Robert. Um, thank you, Mr. Robert. And uh, his br- his brother, who I affectionately call. Uh, <laughs> what is that? What's that? What, what do I call him? You know what I call him? Moon Pie. And of course, Miss Sharon. I've never met any of them, but they make 
Mr. Fuller and myself sound real good. As far as looking good, you'd have to be the judge of that. But thank you. For those of you who are new to the program, and we're going to get to you, Rachel or Rachel, welcome to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host. I am Mr. Bobby. To get in contact with the show, all you have to do, just as Ray and and Dre and Terrence have done, just call this number, 516-453-9921. Press the number one button, and I'll make every effort to make sure that you will be heard today. Okay? All right. Make sure you give your name to to the call screener so that it can come up on the screen and I can get it. You can also Gmail me at the numero 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. Can't say that it will be read today, but point in time it will be, and I will indicate to you that, the words, two words, got it, so that lets you know that you're in rotation. And you can join the chat room by going to blogtalkradio.com. Uh, and now Brian said that um, uh, that that he had problems on getting on there, but I have a, a few people in the chat room, so I, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe constructive action items can can give me more information on that. But anyway. Uh, right now, you can go to blogtalkradio.com, and then you want to click on programs, and then uh, the counter-racist uh, program or produce justice program will come up, and then when that comes up, you can go into the chat. Now, if I am incorrect on that, somebody let me know so that I can give out uh, the proper information. It's important that we all stay on chat. Okay. Or oh, we all stay on code, excuse me. Not only stay on it, but live it. Okay, let's see here. Let's get the new caller in here. Get ready. It's either Rachel or Rachel. I don't know anymore. But anyway, let me see if I can get you in here. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Rachel, get ready, and here you go. Good morning, and welcome to the show. Good morning, Mr. Fuller, and good morning, Mr. Bobby. Um, good morning. Here's my uh, Good morning. This is my first time calling, but I have done Gmails before. Um, my question is, um, should non-white people run their lives like a business? Thank you for your answer. Mr. Fuller? Should non-white people do what? Should non-white people run their lives like a business? Should non-white people run their lives like a business? That's correct. Yes, because what is a business? See, when we use words, we have to have definitions for every word we use, and that and the definition should enhance clarity and focus. That's a part of the code itself. So, what do we mean by business? It means you're busy using what. Time and energy. So you use your time and energy to make sure that everything that you do has a constructive result. See, these are the two words that are throughout the entire counter racist code or compensatory code. Making up for what's missing. What's missing in the existence of people who are classified as non white. of constructive results in everything that we do. And it's the same thing with those white people who have chosen to be white supremacists. They are dedicated to doing things that are non-constructive when it comes to non-white people. So non-white people should be concentrating on raising that question and everything that comes up, just in your everyday comings and goings, regardless of who you're interacting with, in answer to your question about in a business-like manner. Yes. If it's not in a business-like manner for something constructive, it's going to be in a business-like manner to do something that's non-constructive because you have non-constructive business and constructive business. All you have to do is just separate the two and make sure that everything, every move you make, 
and you can always ask that question. Is this going to produce a constructive result? You can ask it to yourself first and then ask it of everybody else. It's a very, very simple formula. People are doing all this talking, 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 saying this and saying that. And you can just, if it's a forum type setting, just hold up your hand Mm -hmm. and say, Mr. Adams or Miss Caldwell or whatever, always be polite and say everything that you just said, everything, you know, that you're proposing, what is going to be the constructive result? Just ask that question. That usually catches a whole bunch of people off guard. Mm-hmm. And people should be on guard, you might say, or in a position to answer that question in a manner that produces what? The most constructive result, even in answering the question. They should be able to tell you, because nobody on this planet should ever be doing anything that is non-constructive, period. So it's, a, it's, it's not a, it's a no-brainer about, you know, if you thinking about how should you phrase something or how it should be said or what fancy words you can come up with. Or should you call it a business or a non-business? Just say constructive results. That's all. That's all I need to hear. Yes, sir. Is this going to produce a constructive result? Yes or no? And if it's going to produce a constructive result, how? Mm Mm-hmm. What is it going to look like? (laughs) All right. New caller, Rachel. Do not be a stranger. To the program and thank you for your call. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Another new caller. Wow. Okay. Um, while you're while well, I'm getting the new caller up here, good thing I'll scroll down here. Somebody tell Mr. Fuller, have you ever heard of a compensatory constructive silence? I just got that off the chat room. Tell compensatory constructive silence? Yes. What I have said in the textbook, uh, based on logic, sometimes the best thing to do, and I've done it at meetings where people expected me to do a lot of talking, and I didn't say one word at the whole meeting. Why? Because I perceived that for me to say anything would not do what? Produce a constructive result. I mean, I would sit right there, and for a two-hour meeting, I would say, after people would be looking at me saying, at some point, Paul are going to say something, and I'd say absolutely nothing at the entire meeting. And when they had another one, I'd do the same thing, because I could see from the way people were talking that if I would say anything along the lines of the way they were thinking, it would not contribute to producing a constructive result. It would contribute to more confusion. And that is something that's never supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. When anybody's talking to anybody, the one thing you definitely don't want, fusion. And so sometimes silence is the best thing to say. Okay. Nothing. All right. Compensatory constructive silence. Thank you, Mr. Fuller, and thank you, Constructive Action Items, for bringing it up. New caller. Hope up now. I hope I am going to pronounce this correctly. Yo, Jeta. Yo, Jeta. From uh, where? South Carolina? Okay, get ready. You are on, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, and what is your question? Ray Rising, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Puller. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question about learn love or uh, install hate. He says a choice to be a white supremacist over learn love. 
A choice to be a white supremacist over what? He said it was a choice of an installed hate or learned love. Is we're learning well, how to love each other all over again. Oh, okay. A, a new so what, sense of love for is, ourselves. So to the code, all, be, okay, according to the code, what is love? What is love according to the code, logic? Love is justice. Justice is love. So what is justice? Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated. And guaranteeing, underline this word guarantee, and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. If you don't produce justice, you have no love because they are one and the same. In fact, it's best not to even use that word love because it's all over the place. Man, this is Saturday night. I'm going out and make me some love. Now, that might not mean to one person what it means to somebody else. Okay? <laughs> that word love has been kicked around so many times. I love you, man. You know. I mean, what does that mean? How do you prove it? Well, I'm a give you a high five or a great big hug next time I see you. Is that love? A hug and a high five? Some people think so. I said something nice to you. That's love. The code says it's best not to use the word at all. Because it means so many different things to so many different people. And when you think of the thing that people say is love, always think of the word justice. Is anybody being mistreated? That's the question. And that person, whatever that mistreatment is, should be stopped. If you're going to show love for a person, stop the mistreatment. And if the person is not being mistreated, but the person needs help, which is connected with, you might say, a form of mistreatment, the person is getting help and not getting it, that's mistreatment too. See, so you guarantee that the person is not mistreated, and you guarantee that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help, and you got love. If you don't have that, you don't have love because you don't have justice. Because justice is love. Yes, sir. And love okay. is justice. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Yo, Jeter, got to give it to you. First time caller, you better not be a stranger. Thank you, my brother, for uh, giving a call uh, to the show. Okay, let me get back up here. So I can um, get these in the uh, order that they came. I think we're going to go to Ray in the Big D in the Metroplex. Man, that's nice out there. Hot, though. Ray, go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Could you leave me on the line, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Fuller, how do you explain to a non-white person who has endured sexual molestation even from someone in their survival unit, that the system of white supremacy is still the most to blame? Just by saying just what you just said, because that's the truth. In any system that you're in, you're supposed to have protection from mistreatment. The system of white supremacy is designed to mistreat people of color. It's deliberately designed for that to happen. That's enjoyment for those white people who believe in racism. That's their major form of enjoyment, if not their whole form of enjoyment in all areas of activity. So if a non-white person has been sexually abused in any kind of way, it's the white supremacist's fault. 
but they enjoy that type of thing. They believe in it. That's their religion. And so you don't mince words about that. They complain about people saying, you know, well, this CRT, uh, critical race theory and whatnot, which I don't know exactly what all that means. But if you're talking about criticizing and saying that white supremacy shouldn't exist, and they're objecting to anybody saying that, they can go right ahead and object, and you keep right on doing it. Say, I'm not going to stop doing that. That's my mission. That's my assignment. According to what? Neely Puller? No, according to logic. This thing called white supremacy never should have existed. Whoever thought that idea up should be chastised in some, or, you know, chastised by corrected anyway. Correcting by getting rid of the system as fast as you can and replace it with what? The logical system, a system of justice. That's it. What we're talking about in this entire program is something very simple. Replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. That's it. That's what this whole program is about. And the best ways of going about doing it. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. There you go. New caller alert. New caller alert. Don't be scared, Saul. New York is in the house. And that's Saul from New York. Saul, you are on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Saul? Hello. Yeah, what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Yeah, Mr. Fuller didn't get to answer my question. I was saying I learned love over installed hate. The installed what? hate part. The installed hate. You said it choose to be a white supremacist, but it's got to be installed. It's installed hate. It's installed okay. in them from birth. They got a code that's installed. Oh, sure. Yeah, they have a code. It's called a white code. What was a white installed code from mean? birth. Yeah, yes, because it, if, you know, you didn't put it in the form of a question, but if that's yeah. your view. To learn love, to learn love over the installed hate, should we love ourselves more than the hate has been installed in them? The code should, like they have a hate, a learn hate code for themselves, should the code be to learn love for ourselves more than but you I have prefer. to explain what love is. What caring, See, we, caring we, use we, that care. word, we use that word to describe everything. We just kick that word around. The word shouldn't even be used. It's so messed up. I say that all the time. When, when, I, when a person says love in a room full of people, what does that mean? But nobody gives a definition for it. Everybody just starts hugging each other and say that's love. That ain't nothing but a hug. That don't prove nothing. The mafia hugs people. In fact, they hug and kiss when they get ready to kill you. That goes back to the ancient Roman Empire. They kiss you when they get ready to kill you. They call it the kiss, the, the, uh, kiss of death. Like the Corleone. He kissed his brother in the movie, The Godfather. Mm-hmm. Michael kissed Fredo in the mouth. He and did, had yes. shot in the back of the head. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. love. And black people believe in that. Because after we get through hugging and kissing, we kill each other before the evening is over. So we should just stop using that word mm. and say, no, justice. So you ask, justice. well, what is justice? It's guaranteeing that nobody is mistreated. Nobody. Got to guarantee that. And you got to guarantee that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Without fail, every time. Then you got justice. So when you got justice, you got love, you got everything else, you got the whole ball of wax. 
You got everything you need when you got justice. Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help in every area of activity, 24-7. Yeah. Mr. Fuller, did you say that love and justice are the same? They are. But That's we right. Should use okay, the word, want... But we should use the word justice mm-hmm. Okay. and stop using the word love because it's too contaminated. I got you. Okay, I just want to make sure that you said that. Okay. All yes. right. Love and justice is saying. Okay, Triple Eight. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. All right, Ray. Thank you. Uh, Dre, Dallas, uh, excuse me, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, Dre. You're <clears> on with <throat> Mr. Fuller. Yo, know, good morning, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. Good morning. I have uh, two questions, if you don't mind. Uh, it, it can only be one today because we have so many callers. Sorry about that. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Fuller, my question is, you came up in a time when black men uh, understood the significance of controlling their emotions as subjects of white supremacy. Do you as an older black male have any suggestions for younger black males on how to cope better, on how to better cope with being prisoners of white white supremacy without, you know, in a very uh, non-constructive way that can get us killed. The code. Mm-hmm. Study the code. That's what I tell people, and a lot of people have, who have told me over the years that they became calmer about every situation that they found themselves in. They say that's one of the effects of being on code. You become calm. You become very thoughtful. Your emotions, emotions do serve a purpose, but they're supposed to be controlled in such a way that they always produce what? A constructive result. Emotion is nothing but power, but power has to have a steering wheel. Like you can have a car with a powerful engine, but you have to steer it. Otherwise, the car is just running all over the place, which is a characteristic of what black people do and how we have been trained to do by the white supremacists. Powerful, powerful, powerful. In fact, you have the image of the black male being powerful, super muscles. I mean, black male is always half naked, running around with great big bulging muscles. I mean, his body is so strong and whatnot that uh, you don't have clothes that'll fit him. I mean, he's all muscle, but no brain. (laughs) And his standing next to him will be a little white man, or preferably a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, little white woman. And she's got this huge giant standing next to her, and she's got him on a leash like a dog. In fact, a black school teacher made that remark about three decades ago. We were both looking at a black male walking down the street holding hands with a white female. And he remarked to me, he said, now there you have an example of a white woman walking a dog Something mm. to think about. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let's do this. A new caller alert. Let's try again. Soul, S O L, from uh, New York. Thank you and for holding. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um. How do we produce constructive results when facing a racist institution in court? Same way. We're always in court. That's that's, that's, uh, something I've been saying for years based on what? Logic. And everybody's on trial. And that's the way you put it. And you act that way according to the code. When you go to court, 
you use codified principles. And it's a lot under law in the code book, under the area, the fifth area of activity. The code book is segmented in the nine areas of activity. The fifth area of activity is just simply called law. It's mm-hmm. a short, it's, 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 it's a number of short examples, but uh, it, it you always come right out of the code. You say, for one thing, what I'm here to help produce a product called justice. And then everything kind of falls in place for that, meaning mm-hmm. guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Yes. And, of course, you have to have skills in doing it now. You have to practice because when you're in court. Thank you. you Thank can't, you. You, can't, you cannot use one word that's out of place. So you choose your words very carefully. And I would say the word guide that you can get by going to produce justice is something that should be referenced. Yes. And if I was in court today, and on trial for anything, I would be coming right out of the code book. I would take my oath to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, and so help me God, because they require you to do that. Yes, And you put your hand on the Bible, even though they say that it's supposed to be separation of church and state. Yeah, they say. But but, but Mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue that point. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing Mm -hmm. it out. That's what it mm-hmm. said. But I would also, if they would allow me, I would have my code book right there. Mm-hmm. On the stand mm-hmm. or wherever they wherever they have me sitting. And I would and every issue that came up, I would just ask for permission because my memory is not good about even what I've written. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I would try to find something pertaining to whatever they were talking about in this of the trial, if it is mm-hmm. a trial. You know, yes, I'm sir. talking about literally. I'm talking. See, the code book is about doing something about this situation, not just talking about it. This is not entertainment. I mean, this is problem solving. So when you're yes, in sir. court, there are problems to be solved. So I would use the same language in anybody's court that I use right here on the air on this program. Yes, sir. If we're talking about love, I would say what the definition is as far as I know, as far as I choose to. Under what? In the Northwestern Hemisphere, freedom of speech. The judge might say, what are you talking about? All right. (laughs) Might ask me that. Uh, Can you explain? Can the witness explain what you... That's what, that word that you just used, I mean, so that the court will understand what's going on. And I'd explain it, but I'd explain it right out of the code book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe it, you put me on trial right now. I mean, in the next 15 minutes and see if I don't do that. I, I just ask, and it slow everything down, but I say, hey, I'm a victim of white supremacy, so I have to be careful with what I do. Mm-hmm. That's what I tell the judge. <laughs> I have to be careful. Uh, yeah, I have to go slower than the average person in court. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so don't be a stranger. Thank you for your call. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co host, Mr. Bobby. To get in contact with the sh- uh, to the show with the remaining moments that we have, dial this number, 516-453-9921. Press the number one button if you have a call or brief comment, please. You can also contact the show by um, Gmail, the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And you can also go to the chat room. By going to Blog Talk Radio, and then there's a place to set programs. Then you want to hit the Produce Justice Show, hit that. And then uh, after you hit that, there's a little bar there where you can 
hit the uh, chat and you can join the chat room. Okay, 516-453-9921 is the uh, number to call. If that last dissertation by Mr. Fuller, he used the word practice, and that is very important that um, we do that. Practice. Practice. Staying on code. How about this? Don't say if. Well, that's just me. Change the if. Again, that's me. To win. When you practice the code, you find out that you are living the code. Terrence, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Hey, good morning, Mr. Bob. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. How are you all? Yes, today? sir. Yes, sir. Still learning. Good. good. Still <laughs> But very good. I, I am too. And I'll tell you what I learned today. Uh, I originally lived in Columbus, and I moved back home to Tennessee, to Knoxville. And I walk in the morning. And I've lived in this neighborhood off and on for 50, over 50 years. And I walk past an old basketball, broke down basketball court. And then there's a botanical garden at the end of the street. And today I just turned left and went into the botanical garden for the first time. And, and when I walked down this path, past these big pine trees that you can't see past. It opened up, and there's a beautiful view. There's all these pathways and gardens and sculptures that I have never seen in 50 years. But I've seen that old broke-down basketball court that all the, you know, the cats go and play on. I've seen all the busted-down houses and cars. So what I was thinking is, about how you know how close to being a universal man I felt when I was in nature, but it's right there in my neighborhood, hidden and blocked by the basketball courts and, and trash and things that the white supremacists, I'm assuming, had put there. So that's my VGQ. My question to you, Mr. Fuller, is how does the code encourage us to become universal man? Um, to eliminate white supremacy. Oh, by eliminating white supremacy. Thinking about white supremacy as being your primary motivating force, which it is. And w- when you have that frame of mind, I'm under the system of white supremacy. What does the system of white supremacy do that has an effect on me? And how does it affect me? And then you say, everything that I do that produces non-constructive results is a result of the system of white supremacy. So how do I counteract that? Well, I pay attention, first of all, to I'm in a system of white supremacy, and they are trying to make me always think, speak, and act in a non-constructive way, except when I do something constructive for them but never in behalf of myself or any other person that's classified as non-white. That's what the system of white supremacy is set up to do. So to counteract that, and you keep that in mind, you begin to notice things that you haven't noticed before because you say everything comes under the system of white supremacy. Either something is feeding into it and making it stronger or it's going to make it weaker and make a system of justice stronger. So you just divide the two. And when you look at anything, look at a car going by. Where is that car going? And the people in it, what are they thinking about doing when they get where they're going, whether it's white people or non-white people? You ask questions that you never asked before to yourself, just like you notice that garden. You decided you were going to make a detour from what you were usually doing. And black people definitely have to make detours from what they usually do in order for anything to change. Otherwise, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. So I just started years ago. I would say, now there's a car going by. There's something we see all the time. There's a car going by. Or there's a bus. Oh, there's a touring bus. I'm in Washington, D.C., so people take a lot of tours. I say, now, a touring bus 
and it has on it passengers who are tourists. Now, what is a tourist? So the answer comes right quick. People who are traveling to see things. Okay, they are traveling to see things like what? And the thing answers start jumping out at you when you start raising questions to yourself, just walking up and down the street, questions you never raised before because you never paid attention to anything other than another black person, which is what black people do more than anything. We just watch and see if we can spot another black person, and then we start thinking like we always think uh, in that narrow vein of the ghetto, which is evaluate another black person. That's what we do, if truth be told. Walking around every day, I mean, astronauts are going into outer space and everything. We're not paying no attention to nothing except another black person walking on the other side of the street and saying to ourselves, and black males do this more than anybody, what's he up to? Do you live around here? I wonder what kind of dude is that? All to go over and either high-five him or shoot him. That's how black people have been trained to think. And the only thing we notice in the big, wide world that we're in is each other. <laughs> yes, sir. And we don't learn nothing from that except how to do something stupid. But yes. when we take that detour and notice a flower for the first time, really pay attention to every pebble on it, pay attention to every feather on a bird for a change, it opens up a whole new world. We've been looking at it all the time, but we haven't been seeing what we're looking at. That's why in the code book it says, in racial matters, many look, but few see. See hmm. what? See what you're looking at. Powerful. Thank you, Tor- uh, Terrence. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hmm. Compensatory constructive silence. I like that. Marcus, man, it's been a minute. How about two minutes? Okay, you're on nationwide or worldwide. Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. I've been doing a lot more listening and uh, and talking lately, so that's my reason for uh, for being a little distant on the program. But I have been listening. Um, First thing, last week, uh, Mr. Fuller had a lot to say about the three words, look at me. And I pondered on that for about a whole week and said to myself, that's exactly what social media is in 2022. A bunch of it is just, look at me. Um, So my question for uh, today is in regards to protesting. Um, I used to uh, go out and protest, uh, especially during the summer of 2020, when a lot of things happened and things were televised. And I was a part of these national protests, one out here in Los Angeles. But I asked myself one question that I'm about to ask you, Mr. Fuller. Um, Does protesting produce a constructive result? I don't know. I'll give a straight-up answer. See, the code says, you know, if I don't know something, I say that's the first thing I say. I don't know. There are people who say that it does most of the time. There are people who say they don't do no good at all. There are people who say, well, it works sometimes. Not most of the time, but sometimes. So I just take people at their word based on their experience. You protested, meaning you were doing something, and you wanted a certain result. So I say, did it produce the result that you wanted? And that, that's, that's my question. So no one can answer that question except the person who, according to the code, uh, a person who says, well, I'm going in protest, and I think my objective is to have people go along with my point of view as a result of me taking part in that protest. It's something I wanted. Did I get what I wanted? That's the main thing. All right. 
first of all, you make up your mind what it is you want. You've got to know what you want before you go, or you should. Now, the white supremacists like for black people just to be out there, just, you know, whatever the event is. Well, now, you black people have shown up, and you're going to participate in uh, this demonstration. That's what they'll call it. So what we expect you black people to do is what you usually do. Uh, Try to find the barbecue stand, and then the rest of the time, shake your behinds. uh, (laughs) Wow. And that's it. Now, the white people will be serious about what we're really here for. We'll take care of the brain part. Y'all just do the booty shaking and eat the barbecue and throw the bones on the ground for somebody else to pick up and go on home. So black people need to know, is this going to produce a constructive result or not? That's the question. When we get ready to have any kind of demonstration or participate in it and whatnot, say, you know, and if you haven't been getting constructive results, then examine what you're doing. That's the codified way. Mm-hmm. Go back to the drawing board and say, now, we're going to have another demonstration, but it's not going to be like the last one because we didn't get what we went after. Mm-hmm. So we're going to change our style of what we did at the last one. And uh, one thing I've observed, chanting may not have the effect that we think that it does. So maybe as a codified suggestion, we need to look into that chanting. Chanting what? Slogans. Over and over again. What do we want? Freedom. When do we want it? Now call and response we should raise the question is is that a plan see it's the difference between chanting slogans and having a plan and maybe we should think about that yes sir think about it all right marcus glad you came to class today you know better you don't have to be a stranger okay I like that. You went back to last week. Look at me. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Speaking about look at me, we're going to look way back up to Buffalo where our friend Monica. Get ready, Monica, because now you are in the house. Go ahead, Monica. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to know, um, I was reading an article, Mr. Fuller, and the article basically said that on June 23rd, the Supreme Court made a decision that it bars lawsuits against, um, wait, it bars lawsuits against the police that they don't have to advise you of your rights, the Miranda rights. Are you familiar with this article? No, I'm not. And I thought it was awful because the article basically went on to say that the police, basically, you can't sue. There's not going to be any consequences for them. Um, The Miranda rights, I believe it goes back like 60 years or so. But um, do you have any opinion on this? Yes, I do. Okay. I'd love to hear it. (laughs) We're in the system of white supremacy. So what you do, you don't fuss. Uh, in a law enforcement situation where, say, you're driving and you're pulled over or something like that, or you're put under arrest, you don't even know what's going on, three things called the three Fs. No fussing. Don't fuss. Don't fight. And don't flee. That's cold. That's ironclad. Why? It doesn't work. That's why. Why do something that when you do it, you know it's not going to work? You start fussing, it's not going to work. You start talking about your rights, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So why do it? Codification is about doing things that work. When you do it, you know it's going to work before you do it. 
what we want as a code for black people. Every time you do it, it works. Every time you say it, it works in your favor. Black people hardly do anything that works. And the white supremacists keep edging us on to do it, and we do more of it. So even though I've been saying it for years right out of logic and based on the record, black people just keep doing it. Person, you're a prisoner of war and you start talking about your rights. You don't have any. Keep that in mind. You have none in the system of white supremacy if you're black. You have no rights. That's what the system of white supremacy is for. No matter what you are told, just because somebody say you got all kind of rights doesn't make it so. So you learn from observation and experience. And so that's the answer. Don't fuss, don't fight, don't flee. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is none of those things that you do are going to work in your favor. They're going to work against you, not for you. And the record okay. shows it. All righty. Monica, thank you so much. Good hearing from you, too. Uh, let's see here. Hang on, Wendell, in South Carolina. Hang on. Let me do this. This is from LaSherion. Mr. Fuller says this. Mr. Fuller, first of all, good morning, Mr. Fuller. Uh can a white person make a choice to be a white supremacist unconsciously? Thank you, Lasherian. Well, I hear that that term, the two terms, consciously and non-consciously or unconsciously all the time. I choose not to use those two terms because I don't know what they mean. But uh, in answer to the question, a white person, according to logic, is born into the system of white supremacy. So it's like a white person being born as one of the warden's children in the system of white supremacy. Because all white people are born in the system of white supremacy and they are born into the family of white supremacists. Well, they didn't choose to be born in the system of white supremacy. Nobody was. Nobody chooses where they were going to be born or when or where. They find themselves here. Now, if you are white, you are born in a world system called the system of white supremacy, the most powerful government in recorded history. So it's assumed that if you are born into the white supremacist family, which in the system of white supremacy you are, then you have to make a choice somewhere along the line. Are you going to renounce the government in which you are born in? And the name of that government is the system of white supremacy, which means you have to actively fight against the circumstances in which you are born, the government in which you are part of as a practitioner of that government, a benefit factor, uh, a person that benefits from it, born in that government. So you just can't say, well, you know, I'm here, so I just go along with whatever I see other people classified as white do. No, you have to accurately say, this is an illegitimate government, and I was born in an illegitimate government, and so I am going to replace that illegitimate government with a government that is by the standards of truth and justice and correctness will be a legitimate government. That's a government of justice. Replace this government 
of mistreating people based on color with a government of justice. Replace racism with justice. That's my duty as a white person, as it is the duty of the people who are subject to that government, the non-white people of the planet. That's their duty. They were born as victims Mm -hmm. of that illegitimate government. And that's it. It's just that simple. Okay. Now, most white people are, I'll just say, I can't say most because the code won't allow me to do that because I don't have the figures, but sizable numbers, huge numbers of white people say, well, this is the government that I was born in, and it benefits me. So I ain't turning down the government that benefits me. I'm not fighting against a government that benefits me for a government that somebody says is yet to be and ain't never been seriously tried. I'm going to stick with something that is absolute, something that works and has been working for a long time. And working for whom? For people that benefit me primarily. Why would I give that up? I'm born in a royal family. See, every white person can tell them that. I'm born in a royal family where everybody is a king and queen who is white. And I'm going to give that up for something that's a question mark. So I can see how every white person would say, no, white supremacy forever. This is the best thing since anything. (laughs) And give it up for something. Give it, give it up for something that's a question mark, like a something called justice that ain't nobody never seen or practice. No. So I think that answers the question. So don't expect white people to want to give it up, but even though that's their duty. All righty. If they're talking about justice. Okay, Lasherian, thank you for the call. Last, probably the last call of the day. Window, I think we squeeze you in here. Let me see. Window from South Carolina, you're on the phone with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> Hello, uh, Mr. Bobby. Uh, it's actually Wendell, but it's okay. Oh, Wendell, okay. Wendell. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Fuller, I would like to just get your opinion today on uh, why do you think white people – have so many offspring and and, and 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 sexual activity with black people. I mean, do you? What's your opinion on why they do that? Don't I mean because don't they have to know that we prisoners of war? Sure, that's what you're doing, prisoners of war. Yes, I answer to the question straight up. That's what you do with prisoners of war. In fact, they brag about it uh, in the old days. Yeah, we kill all the males and rape the females. That's what we do. What do you think we went to war for? I mean, that's what we do. I mean, duh. I mean, you think we're going to just go to war for nothing? Ain't going to get nothing out of it? We're going to get something out of it. And what do we get? We get whatever they got. With a little bit to have, and we either kill the males or enslave them. That's what war is about. Have somebody that you can boss around. They do whatever they take you want them to do. And if they got females, hey, we take the females and do the same thing with females that they were doing before we arrived. But we knew where they were. We take those. All right. You can't have none of mine, but I took you, and then I took whatever you got. And you said, that's your woman. It ain't your woman no more. And she's going to have babies and going to have them by me when I want them. And then I'm going to use them, too. And I'll have sex with them, with their babies that they had by me. So what? You're all a bunch of garbage anyway. So that's the white supremacist doctrine. So in answer to your question, that's it. Just like I explained it. 
We call it going swimming. All right. Mm. All righty. Thank you, Wendell, for your call. All righty. Let's do this. Mr. Fuller, we got about, well, three minutes. So guess what? It's book time, and then we're going to close out the show. Okay. You go to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. And right there you will see the methods for ordering the books. They may not be all up there right now, but I've been told that there was a problem in the shipping and it kind of makes up in the printing and it kind of slowed things down. So whatever the instructions you see about the status of those volumes, it's supposed to be this one volume, but I couldn't get it the last two printings the 2016 edition and the word guide, I would like to have gotten that into one book, one volume, that is, but it's two volumes. But the basics, basic book to look for is the 2016 volume called A Compensatory Counter-Racist Code. You'll see that in the center title. It's got three titles, actually, on the cover of the book. But the center title, A Compensatory Counter-Racist Code, 2016 edition. And that's yes, right there on the cover of the book, too. That's mm-hmm. the main one to look for. Then there may be a word guide there, uh, should be. That's an extension of the basic book. Go to ProduceJustice.com. Okay. And it's directed toward the individual person. It helps you as an individual because that's what I, I wanted somebody to have a book like this out years ago when I, when I finally decided to write one myself because I couldn't find nothing that would tell an individual black person what to do and what to say and what not to do and what not to say in every circumstance yes, that sir. would work for you and not against you. ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. And on a side note, until I, the understanding I have, that book can also be obtained by going to Amazon.com, unless the information I got was incorrect. But so far, if you can't go to ProduceJustice.com, which is the primary site, you can go to Amazon.com, and the uh, from what I understand, you can order the book from there. And please make sure that when you do that, that you mention this program. And I think something special happens. What, I don't know, but I was just given that information. Okay, Mr. Fuller, we have one minute to go. It's yours before we close out the show. I'll just say, uh, we need a code. You know, a lot of people down through the years have talked about what do I mean by a code and whatnot. The white supremacists have a code. Meaning, it, what is a code? Things that you do, things that you don't do. We don't have anything like that. We're always scratching our heads. That's why I'm saying we, and when I say we, not just Neely Fuller, try to codify everything that you do on a daily basis. Yes. Sir. All of the non white people out there, within the sound of my voice, when you go into a situation and you find that you made a mistake, immediately say, I'm going to codify this so I don't make this mistake again. All righty. ProduceJustice.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank everybody for listening. 